What is going on, everybody? Jamie Shaw here on the Absolute Basketball Experience. And on today's edition of Film Breakdown, we're going to take a look at Josh Hall. Paul is a six foot nine prospect who played his junior and senior seasons at Moravian Prep in Hickory, North Carolina. This past year, he averaged 25 points, four and a half rebounds, and shot close to 40% from three, including a huge 51 point outburst against AZ Compass in December. Hall played last season on the AAU with uh, Team Loaded North Carolina on the Adidas Gauntlet. Last November, Hall committed to the NC State University, and just this past week, he declared for the NBA draft while signing with an agent. But is Hall ready to be drafted? Today, we're going to be looking at a video posted by Elite Mixtapes East on January 10th in 2020, titled Josh Hall Midseason Highlight Tape, X, uh, NC State Commit. Be sure you check out the link in the description below and subscribe to Elite Mixtapes channel, as well as take a look at the video. All of that's listed below. But let's take a look at what it is about Hall's game that's so appealing to the NBA level. And without further ado, here's Elite, Elite Mixtapes East video, Josh Hall midseason highlight tape, NC State commit on the absolute basketball experience with Jamie Shaw. Thank you very much. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and get going here. Elite Mixtapes. Bryce does a great job. He's been doing it for a while. Make sure y'all check out Bryce Lanning. Nice dunk. Alley-oop, excitement after the play, Hall. See, this is part of the thing that makes him so appealing is that he is legit 6'9", as you can see. He's got the length. He's got the body control. Um, he's got the fluidity within his motion. Uh, and he's got the pure uh, jump shot, as you saw a couple, couple clips ago. There he goes doing the Euro step with some wiggle in the paint, attacking the basket, getting downhill. Uh, there he is breaking off a defender off the bounce. He showed the ability to, to, to go left to right, get downhill not necessarily dance with the ball and, and go with it. It goes the jump shot. And that's the thing. You see he's the biggest guy on the court, but he's smooth with it. Like he's very smooth with the ball. He's very fluid with the ball. Handling it in a phone booth. Got running three guys at him. Still finishing in the mid-range game. Nice little mid-range pull up there. Showcasing some talent with that. There he goes attacking the basket again. That's against Combine Academy. Wow, step back, jump shot. Whew, that's tough to guard. His ability on that play in the mid-range there to create space, he's done it twice already in this video, uh, creating space off the bounce and then feeling as to where to go, where the openness, open lane is to shoot the ball. Another two-dribble two pull-up in the paint. So already in this video, he's been able to show uh, the ability not down to catch and shoot jump shot, but he's also attacked a couple of closeouts, gotten into the mid-range. He's finished all the way at the basket, dunking on kids, but he's also finished in the mid-range, pulling up on people. That versatility with his game, not even more so than that, the feel of, of how to score the basket uh, with that uh, is something that's very impressive. Here he goes, getting downhill again, attacking the basket. He's shown a few times in this clip as well, um, his ability to, to kind of go between and peruse and not attack, and then all of a sudden, once he sees the lane open, attack that lane with a purpose. Get downhill, get straight downhill, um, and finish there at the rim. Some good vision, another catch and shoot three there. As you see, beautiful jump shot. Close, shot close to 40% from three this year, that thing's. Uh, with his high release point, consistent release point. That's nice. Nice straight line athleticism. Turning defense into offense there. Good eye, head up, attacking the basket. Um, you see there, it's it, had Josh gone to college, what they do typically with these type of players is play them at the four as a skill type of four. As you can clearly see here, Josh is a, Josh is a clear wing. He's a clear perimeter player who has the ball skills. He's got the feel, and he's got the jump shot and all that kind of stuff, the ability to move as well on playing the perimeter. There goes another two dribble pull up left. See, in this video already, he's gone two dribble pull up left and two dribble pull up right. Knock the shots down with ease on both of them. That feel, that feel for the game is going to be good. Sure, he's slight, slightly built, um, you know, but that's just going to come as he continues, uh, as he continues on, as he continues forward, gets in a, an NBA weight program and stuff. Natural athleticism there. He had his elbows at the rim on that. There's another one running the floor. He gets up the floor incredibly fast. Um, this Moravian prep team this year was really, uh, really good defensively. Josh played mostly in the wings with that. Uh, they had the likes of uh, Darius Davis, Shaquille Moore, two high-level defenders who were guarding uh, at the half court and trapping and all that kind of stuff. And Josh had great anticipation a lot of times in, uh, you know, in the passes, shooting the passing lanes and getting out on the break uh, from the wing. Uh, he, he accumulated a ton of steals with that, um, with, it, with that anticipation and that, uh, that aggression. Here goes another one, as you see, continues to beat his man down the floor every single time. 
And that's not cherry picking either. That's actually him getting down the floor, beating his man. Nice little floater. Nice mid-range game. You see, and that's a lot of the thing, too, that you find with players these days, guys who score. They're either behind the three-point line or they're all the way at the basket. Josh, as you've seen here, the really great scorers in the league score in the mid-range. They're able to hit the mid-range shots. You look at the guys like Kawhi Leonard. You look at the guys who are all the, the leaders in the NBA right now. While the analytics game saying shoot threes, shoot threes, shoot threes, it's the guys who are able to knock down the 18-foot jump shots who still consistently are the ones who are leading the league in scoring and everything. Josh Hall has the feel within the mid-range. As you see here, he's going floor to floor here. This is uh, Henderson Collegiate, uh, a state champion team in the state of North Carolina this year. Impressive finish at the rim there. So let's take a look here at some positives, some, some room for improvement, and the overall outlook for what Josh Hall looks like moving forward into this NBA draft. First off, you have to look at his size, length, and athleticism combination. He stands at six foot nine. He's very long. He may, not, he may still not be growing, but we can't even project that. Let's look at what he is right now. He's got great size at 6'9". He's got great length, and he's got good straight line athleticism. He also has nice wiggle in his hips, uh, very fluid, very loose, the ability to get uh, downhill and, and be crafty a little bit around the basket. Um, his ability to shoot the ball um, and all that kind of stuff with his three-point range is something that exactly what these NBA guys are looking for right now, a guy who stands in that playmaking wing type of role who can really shoot the ball but can also put the ball on the floor and, and create offense for themselves, um, you know, on the floor is, is the way that the NBA is moving and the way that the NBA is thriving at this point in time right now. And with his size, his length, and his athleticism, he innately uh, has that. To go along with the three-point range, as you saw in this video here uh, from Elite Mixtapes East, um, you know, he had it off the catch and he had it off the bounce. There was a comfort level in getting into a shot with the proper mechanics, high release, soft touch, and repeatable release, no matter what spot on the floor he was on, no matter if it was off the catch or the bounce, going left or going right. He always got into the pocket, and he always got it up high and soft, knocked it down, as you saw this year, playing a national schedule, 37 games. He was a top – their team was top 25 ranked um, by teams by, – by people who ranked prep schools. Um, and, and you saw – he was able to repeat that jump shot against high level talent. Also, he has a feel for his spots on the floor. That's something that's huge within the NBA game. Uh, he, Josh already innately um, knows where he wants to get on the floor and he's able to get there both off the bounce, both off movement and all that kind of stuff. He knows uh, that he, he likes the elbow jumper. He knows that he's able to catch the shoot from the three point line. He knows that he's able to get downhill off the basket. Um, and, and he surveys the floor with his vision, and he gets to the spot quickly uh, once he's able to get there. Um, that, that, that's just a natural feel thing that he has, the ability to, to be able to do that. Um, and his work ethic. Uh, his work ethic is, is off the charts. Uh, he's somebody who will continue to work hard once he gets there. He'll, he will continue to take coaching. He's a first in the gym, last one out type of guy. Who, who wants to get coached and he wants to get better. Don't, not only does he want to get better, but he wants to be great. And that is something that not a lot of people necessarily have, but, but, but Josh is one person who wants to be great. He will continue to work. He will continue to take coaching and he will continue to be in there grinding to get better and better and better. You know, adding together the size, length, and athleticism, adding together three-point range, adding together his skill set, his ability to see the floor, his ability to look up, his ability to put the ball on the floor, um, you know, and get to his spots. Adding all that together with a work ethic, there's a lot to work with there. And it's easy to see as to how the NBA can look at him as kind of a blank canvas and, or, or a piece of clay in order to be, them to be able to mold and consume into how they, how they see fit. Now, he's still working on his strength. The strength will be something that everybody questions. People are going to say, who's he guarding now? Or people will say, well, how's he going to take the beating and all that kind of stuff. But his strength is something he knows that he's going to work on. Uh, he's got a slight frame. But once he gets into the NBA – you know, once he gets into the, their weight programs, once he gets into their workouts, once he gets into their nutrition and all that kind of stuff, you know, you know, he's a 19 year old young man. Their bodies aren't filled out yet. That weight will come. I don't think he'll ever be a huge hulking monster, but the weight will come uh, as he builds his core, as he builds his leg strength and he'll be able to take the beating and the pounding and all that kind of stuff. So the, the, the strength thing is, is something that he's still working on. It's not necessarily something that I would be concerned with at this time being the future trajectory of what he's looking to do. And then also he just needs to tighten everything up. What I mean by that is sure he can handle the ball, 
but he's going to have to tighten that handle up. He's going to have to tighten up his footwork. He's going to have to tighten up uh, his ability to, to, and his understanding of exactly where his spots are, exactly how he can get to his spots and what plays he needs, what, um, what, what dribble combinations, what footwork he needs and all that kind of stuff. That's nothing abnormal for a high school player coming out. High school guys need to always tighten up what they do. He's going to need to tighten up. He's going to need to have that understanding of, uh, of, of, his overall game, overall honing his skill set and all that kind of stuff. So the strength and the, and the tightening up his skill set are things that he's still working on. But overall, he is what the program is right now. His game, his skill set, he is what they're looking for with the play creating, the shot making wing. That's all the Vogue term that you hear about going in the NBA now. And that's what all the best players are. Not all the best players, but a lot of the best players in the NBA right now are, are shot making, play creating wings who have upside to be defensive stoppers as well. Um, that's the mold that Josh is going to have to have to jump into maybe even a three and D type and, and initially go into the three and D type and then develop into the play creating guy, the guy who can get off the bounce and get his off the bounce and all that kind of stuff. Sure. He still needs to be developed, but he's not going into surgery tomorrow. Getting into an NBA program, the workouts, the nutrition, the training regimen, the grind, all that kind of stuff will allow him to be able to hone his own craft of what he has, but there's no denying the fact that he has the raw talent. Um, you know, this, this is just far too much to ignore. Um, the, the raw talent, uh, like we said earlier, a blank canvas, um, you know, to be able to paint a masterpiece upon uh, for these NBA teams. And, and, and you know, you, you kind of have to see that right now. Josh is a grinder. Josh is a worker. He has a chip on his shoulder. And as we said earlier, he wants to be great. Um, you know, and, and then, Looking at the overall trajectory of guys in the past, in the most recent past, Anthony Simons, Jalen LeCue, Mitchell Robinson, these guys who kind of went straight out of high school or prep school into the NBA, they weren't year one guys. They had to hone their craft. They had to, you know, live on the bus on the G League and be developed by by the coaching staffs, by the programs that the NBA guys have. And if you look at Simons now, he started some games last year for Portland, and they have a, they have a clear vision for him. Same with Mitchell Robinson. They have a clear vision for him. Uh, and, you know, Jalen LeCue is coming along at his own pace as well. Josh, Josh Hall is kind of, kind of in that same path. Take a late pick on and, and develop him based on the fact as to his work ethic, his character, and his natural raw skill set. And that's very easy to be seen. Um, you know, that, that, that's very easily, uh, you know, to, to, to gamble upon, uh, especially, you know, with, with, with these picks as these picks go on. Um, you know, somebody who's got character, somebody who's got moral, somebody who's got a natural skill set, size, length, and ability of an easily uh, viewed thing in, in the NBA, um, you know, and, and, and somebody who wants to be great. All of that is encompassed in Josh. Sure, he's not going to help you next year. He might not even help you in two or three years. But – as he continues to grow, as he continues to get in there, and as you continue to get him into your system, he has a game that you can look forward and see in the next few years being NBA ready and being able to play. Very excited to see what Josh does here. Very excited to see how this plays out for him. In order for him to have signed with an agent, he obviously must have already heard some very good intel. All it takes is one team. And in this video, I wanted to point out that it's very easy to see how one team in the NBA could like, could be willing to spend money, could be willing to spend a draft pick on what Josh Hall could end up being in the future. Thank you guys very much for tuning in to the Absolute Basketball Experience with Jamie Shaw, this edition of Film Breakdown.